Right, so I have the Anycubic Photon M3 Resin 3D printer, and while I think it's a pretty cool printer, it's no, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> it does have one major flaw in my opinion, in that changing the FEP sheet on the 3D printer really isn't all that cheap. Now, you might be thinking like, well, FEP sheets in general are pretty cheap, but uh, what makes this one different? Well, the problem with the Anycubic Photon M3 is that the FEP sheet actually comes with the FEP frame, and the whole thing together, that, ex that assembly itself, I think costs like 20, 30 US dollars. And you mean, I mean, you can't change the uh, material out yourself. So when I wanted to try and change the uh, FEP material on my resin 3D printer with something else, namely NFEP, it was pretty difficult. I couldn't really find anything online on how to do it. And so I took matters into my own hand and 3D printed my own FEP frame together with the, uh, well, it uses the, what do you call it? Heat inserts, heat threaded inserts. And I'm going to show you how it, uh, how to do it as well as pff, how it goes. Yeah. I'm actually pretty excited for this. I started off by measuring the existing FEP frame that came with my Photon M3 and 3D modeled a replica as two separate pieces. I then made new screw and countersunk holes on each side and while I could have just screwed the holes directly into the 3D printed part, you know, just threading it that way, I opted instead to go one step further and do something a little bit special. I'm going to be using heat set inserts instead. This is because copper heat set inserts are more durable than bare plastic, therefore should last longer and be able to withstand the amount of torque that I will be using to properly sandwich and secure the FET frame in between the frames because the last thing that we want are leaks. In case you're interested, the copper heat inserts that I'm using have an M3 thread and are 5mm in diameter, 2.5mm thick, and the accompanying screws that I'm using are of course also M3, countersunk, and 4mm in length. I'm also printing the frame in PETG for that extra flexibility as well as durability. The copper inserts will be installed onto the outer frame aka the frame that we'll see on the underside of the vat and when installing them I first laid them onto something flat and heat resistant like my metal board holder right here, then placed the heat insert into the little gap that I designed into the 3D print. This is to prevent them from slipping around when I'm pressing it down with my hot iron and here you can see me using another wider nozzle in between the soldering iron and the copper insert. And this is just so that I can have a surface that touches the ring around the insert and not go into it as I found that it can sometimes get stuck when pushing it down and that usually ends up with it shifting around and being difficult to pull out. When all heat inserts are installed, I pretty much move on to installing the FEP sheet in between my newly prepared frame. And I actually made a little bit of a mistake here. I accidentally reversed the side of my NFEP sheet, so the rougher side instead became the print bit, but I later rectified this off camera. The FEP sheet that I'm using measures about 235mm by 160mm for those of you who may be wondering. You can see that after I'm done I try to tune the tension of the FEP sheet to about 320Hz but I didn't quite get to do so, but only managing to reach about 280Hz uh, at maximum tension. I found however that the FEP tension didn't really negatively impact my ability to print properly so I wouldn't put too much importance into trying to get it perfectly taut. Now before publishing this video I wanted to make sure that I had something that works and is reliable because if my mod sucks and is terrible, there's really no reason for me to want to recommend doing it and indeed what you've seen me done or do so far has been about one and a half months since and well since then I've managed to print without issue quite a number of models so I would definitely call this mod a success and a definite money saver because at least for me now just purchasing FEP sheets is much cheaper than opting for the stock any cubic option. I even successfully printed at pretty high speeds of about 360 millimeters per meter of lifts. I hope you guys found this video helpful if you did please share it, subscribe, and maybe comment down below if you've tried it and it works for you as well. My name is Yang Tech Rodent, and I'll see you guys in the next video.